Welcome back. I'm so sorry I haven't been doing videos for such a long time. I've been really busy. This last six months have gone past really fast. Um, so this time I'm going to be doing a whole load of mark making on papers. Um, just utilising paints to make really beautiful colours and combine colours in unusual ways. And then they just are used in your portfolio ready for collaging whenever you want. They're just a series of five, I think, five or six mark making processes. And there's so many others and there's so many other ways of doing it. And this is just the beginning. I add to them afterwards. One thing I wanted to say was that I often intend to do a type of tutorial and I end up really responding to whatever happens. So you really respond to how the paint works and the colours that come out. So in the end, it's the actual painting process that determines what you're going to do next. And this way you really have some lovely surprises and you learn so much from it as you go on. Well, I hope you enjoy. If you like the videos, please remember to like, like and subscribe. All the best. Thanks very much. I've just done this abstract and I've made some really lovely papers beforehand. Didn't know what they were going to go with. Oh, I just love this. I really like the way this blue and the brown go so well with the red. Uh, the brown and the pink. There's some really nice mixtures of colours in these. And this is some jomchi that I laced. Sorry, some mulberry papers that I jomchi to lace. And I did this at the same time as well, which was a orange and a red. So orange on one side and red on the other. There's actually three sheets, two sheets of orange and one of red. Jumchi to this lovely, look how beautiful it goes. In any case, so that'll go on another one. But today I'm just going to show you a few nice ways of mark making so that you've got these sheets of really wonderful colours left over. This is not gel plate printing, it is just collaging. Um, they're just out of a sketchbook. Oh, look, I did some drawing on the back of it. They're just out of a sketchbook. Um, and I was just messing really to see what I could make. I mean, look at those, that's really lovely. It's That's really nice as well, but look at these blues, that's beautiful. Because that is what this was. So paints behave in unusual ways, depending on how they're mixed and um, how they're applied and the surface that they're applied to. So in this case, I've put layers of different colour on and I've, there's some really beautiful things that's happened here like this um, and these funny bits here so I think I'd like to try and replicate that but more control. It will depend on all sorts of things like how much binder you've got in your colours and how it's applied whether it's on wet paper and how you let it dry as well. Like if I just carry this over, if I put loads of water on this and carry it over, it's all going to run to the middle. So if you're going to try and let something be, try and have a space you can just push it away from you once it's finished so that you don't disturb it too much. Because some of the effects when it does just merge into one another are really nice. So I've got some paints here and I have got a video on how I mix these paints because I put binding with it which are acrylic mediums so that the acrylic pigment within the solution dissolves. Now I'm going to splatter and it's just because I, I really like sort of earthy colours at the moment. I'm enjoying the idea of playing with you know how nature affects us. So I'm just going to run that on and then get my water and spray it a bit because I love the way it moves. And then this is a perfect example of how much do you want this to move from this point. Do you want to let it dry and then work on it on another layer? I mean some of the way that the pigments move through it's gorgeous. Luckily today is really warm. I mean that green is gorgeous. And of course it'll dry a lot sort of duller, so I'm just going to shove a bit more of this on and just let it happen. And again, they're just beautiful colours, aren't they? So that's part of it as well, isn't it? Mess with colours. And I must admit, I do like it when it sort of goes 
dirty a bit and also when there's unusual combinations so I thought I might put a purple in there or pink no I'm gonna go for a purple I want some more water in that because it's quite thick and I want it more watery but it's still mixed the same with a bit of binder I, the binder just seems to oh look at that so that was just a mixture of purple and obviously whites and it'll just be interesting to see what happens I quite like a bit more of this on there because I want that to be the, the majority of the colour rather than the green and the purple I want the green to be because it's a sharp green okay that one will do and I'm going to have to hardly move it at all and you can see I've lost the lovely mark making I made with the first green which really I would like to keep but I didn't I wasn't too keen on that sharp green but it might dry a much better colour I uh, quite like some actual thick lumps of pigment there and again some really lovely things happening I hope it dries quite quickly because I haven't got enough space for too many of these that's one now let's try this other colour oh, this is a nice colour Um, in this case, I think I'm gonna. Whoops! It doesn't matter. I'm gonna put some colour on and just enjoy the mark making. Oh, I mean that's beautiful. The way that's gone grey. I don't want some more of that. And I always find, I know it looks such a mess, but I always find that surprising things happen when you, when you just go for it like this. You sort of end up trusting your mark a bit more, to tell you the truth, I think. Did you see that? Then it just mudged really nicely through each other. I don't want too much of that, and I want it more grey. Same with that. Just want a bit of that. And then you see what you can also do is get the end of your brush and start marking through it. And again, you know, trust your line because it will come through, your line will come through. Your mark making will start to have a character as you go on. And it'll help with the style of your images because if you just go for it, how you, you would normally move, You know what I mean? You could be a good dancer, couldn't you? Or something like that. So just go for it. I don't like that. Just smear it off a bit. And then you can leave that to one side, let it dry, and you can go over it again, put more colour on it, um, and scratch through because it'll reveal the, the colour underneath next. That needs some grey or something. Wow. I do actually really want some grey on that at this point. And then it's just a question, you know, keep going. If you don't like something, keep going until there's something there that you like. Gorgeous. 
that was Nickel Azo Yellow. Right, that's just the lump, almost pure colour. I'm just going to get a thing. Oh, look. Can you, I hope you can see that. So that was just the, it was almost out of the jar, yeah, out of the uh, container. Oh, and I'm using the side of it, look. That's lovely as well. Oh, it's so nice. So look, you can pull it through on the edge of it. And then that doesn't, you don't have to stop there, do you? I've got paint all over this now. Look at me, I'm such a mess. I'm terrible. Things don't happen fast enough for me. Right, well, I'm really enjoying the colours coming out in this. And it was pure by chance, you know. I'd got these colours mixed beforehand. And then... When I do abstracts, I, I, you know, you've, I have all the, the papers ready in advance and then it doesn't actually take long to do the abstracts and I go, oh gosh, look, I've done masses today, but I haven't, have I? It's taken all this time first to do the abs, do all the preparation work and I just conveniently forget. Look, I want lots and lots of this colour, so I'm sweeping it off onto a scraper just so that I can get it on quicker too impatient. I don't want the brush marks, you see. I want them to be more organic, more haphazard. Um, and then pull this over as well. I must admit, I really need to do some of this actually on a piece of canvas just to see how it behaves on canvas as well. There's loads that I really like there. I just want a bit more of this, but with water in it. Just to suggest it again. Stop. See how that turns out because I can always work on it when it's dry. So that didn't go grey, did it? <laughs> right, that's the green one. Oh, and it's still not dry, but it's for it's forming into really nice lumps, and it's you just leave it. You have to leave it. And I might work on that again. We've got, we've got greens and purples. I've got a thing about greys, haven't I, I think. And I want to mix a yellowy grey, a, a grey and a yellow. So, there's some white. Here's a bit of black, it's carbon black. That's probably far too much because I like it hardly anything at all, so I'm going to take some out. I like it very dull grey. I'm going to put a tiny bit of purple in and some water, which has in fact got a bit of green in, so but that doesn't matter. And now I'm going to mix it with a green brush, get all the white off there. Try to get that onto the paper as well. And now if I wanted that to sort of go, have a gloss to areas of it, I could add some 
medium but I don't I want that to sort of diffuse in I think so how am I going to do this I think uh, that is too dark but I'm going to see how it goes and then what I really want is this lovely um, yeah that's nice that's a that's the funny yellow that I had from before I don't mind that it's again I just love the way that it sort of if you let it be I like what it does itself I like you know what it does without you having to do anything I like these funny marks and I think they in the end it will be evident it's me making them because that's how I paint and it's almost like just become coming to terms with your mark making and not worrying that it doesn't have it's not got a contemporary reference it's your your that you've made it haven't you do you know what I mean it's not you there's no like this everybody does those square things on things at the moment but you know, don't try and mimic somebody else. Allow your mark to th show through. Now look, I just love some of these things. And I don't know whether I'm wrong or I'm right, but I absolutely love the way it works, as is. And I mean, if you played more, you'd find even more that you liked, wouldn't you? So that's gonna, I'm gonna leave that, get rid of all of the water make sure there's no uh, white oh, I don't like those so much on this but I do and I do like that bit of black so let's just see because I really like that <laughs> But I don't know whether it's, it's part of it will be useful. Um, right. A grey. A grey again. I don't. I like it being a dirty grey. Oh, it's got a slight bit of. Um, sort of rust colour in it. So it's got a slight pink tinge. It's gorgeous actually. There you go, that sort of colour, but taken right down with the grey. colour, sort of, again, fleshy. But there's some nice marks come out of that, actually, just because of the thickness of the paint on the brush. Um, I can't mess that up, I like that colour. Again, this is determining what I do next, isn't it? I'm not really in control of it. So that pinky colour was a Marge, Mars yellow, and I'm now going to try mixing a bit in another pot. So I want a bit of pink and a bit of that Mars yellow, which is a rust. Yeah, that's a really nice colour. So instead of it being a harsh pink, it's got a slight rust colour to it. I'll tell you what's a nice way. Let's just bung that on. And then if you get a thread, and then 
moving it about the place with a thread and see what it does. And then I'm actually going to dip it in the pink and try moving that about the place as well. Okay, I mean, I can go back over that with other colours because what I like is the way it's gone on when the paint was still wet underneath. So it's actually dragged the colours through, hasn't it? I really like that. Let me, I just... I don't want to really mess that. I really like that. I better stop. I just want a tiny bit more of that. The Mars yellow and that pink. Yeah. It's just a slight change in tonality. Nothing, something really, really subtle. If goodness knows what I'm going to use this for, but I do like it. So there's another one. There you go. I, I've put a couple of few colours on there, and I'm just going to just try and drag colours over gently, gently. You know, bring things in slowly and carefully. Well as much as I do that, like that. You see, I think I... And then... Just see what happens with that. Over these other colours. And again, it sort of doesn't need... You could over... You could get really carried away with this and over complicate it, but that's quite nice just as is, isn't it? Some white paper, I don't want that really really quiet and subtle and that was just changing your paintbrush you know from this so going to a smaller one And seeing what marks you make with, and all I'm using is the leftover bits of paint. And because you're getting this lovely layering of colour underneath and the greens are coming through, again, like, I don't want to overdo it. There's enough really nice bits in there already. Okay, another one where I just, instead of dragging it, you just sort of place it over and see what happens and leave it be. And these beautiful marks it can make. And then I wonder what it would be if you left it be and then took it off. If you put it on and slightly drag it, it has a really nice effect as well. I'm going to just let these be and then see how they dry. Oh, the white bit. It goes directly for my pink, I think. Because I can always either darken this up, like I can scrunch this up and darken it, and all these beautiful marks will just come out in different ways, won't they? Let's just see how that comes out. Move that over to dry. Out. Getting sticky. So we ended up with these. One, two, three. That one. Oh, that was one I didn't. Sh oh yes, no, I think I did show you that one's that one. And this one, which I really love. So this one looked lovely when it was wet um, and may look really nice when it was when it's varnished but what I like about this is the globules that have formed and I think that's to do with the amount of medium that you've put in um, because it's what's gone slightly shiny uh, more more varnishy than the rest of it the rest is very matte in other words it's the pigment diluted in water but where there is the gloss medium in it, 
it sort of condensed into these more solid plastic varnishy finishes. So I like that. All of these I will work on again, do more layers on in order to use them. They become really transformed when they're all scrunched up with a momigami process. You can add glazes on the top of these to add colour again. So this isn't where I stop. And what you end up with is a portfolio of colours that you can combine with all your other beautiful bits and pieces. So I keep everything. And look, you've got some really beautiful colours to combine. You can also put them in sketchbooks sort of to remind you how you did it, put little notations about how you did them in the sketchbook. I particularly like this one um, and I should put it in a sketchbook now, a little sample of it. I loved the green that was coming through when this was wet and I'm going to try and enhance that to do something that really utilises that experience of colour because it was beautiful. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. There'll be loads more that are going to be like this because there's a few processes I do in order to make these papers. So I'll show you the processes and I'll show a number of different ways of doing these. But for now, this video is long enough and that's five or six to start with. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you again. All the best.